this glare is something serious. Let's talk about financial literacy, okay? Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, cool. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about why financial literacy is so important and why so many of us don't know what that means. First and foremost, I just wanted to give you guys the definition of what it means to be financially literate. So give me a second while I read my notes. Pretty much, financial literacy is the possession of the set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make informed and effective decisions with all of their financial resources. What does that mean for you and me? Basically, that means that if we knew what we learned after college, pretty much by experiencing it, in real life, you know, that being our first time ever hearing about taxes, hearing about loans and debt and things of that nature, we could have made better informed decisions prior to that. Prior to, you know, figuring out that when we get a job, uh, the government is going to take 25% of our paycheck. Whatever the case is, you know, had we been financially literate, literate we would have known these things. So let's get into if I knew what I know now, what I would do differently, I would not have gone to an expensive college. So I went to this very resort looking college um, and I won't say any names, but you know, I, I saw this college online and I was like, oh, this would be really cool. I got accepted. So that was the, the only thing I thought I needed was an acceptance letter. So I ended up going to this very expensive college. I took out student loans, kind of got approved on the spot. I had no idea what they were checking because if I go back and look at it now with the same credentials and criteria that I had back then and I tried to get a loan today, that would not have happened. So I really don't know what they looked at when they gave me a $10,000 student loan. I did get scholarships. I did get grants. I got all that stuff from both the school and from the government but that wasn't enough. I still needed to get some out-of-pocket money and I did. I did have FAFSA as well, but again, first thing I would have done differently is I would not have gone to such an expensive college. Education is free nowadays. Like you're watching this video, I'm teaching you about financial literacy. Uh, you know, there's so many other ways to learn online. I could have spent 10K on a course and I could, you know, <laughs> I don't even know, but your money is better spent elsewhere. If college is something that's for you and you really wanted to do that, kudos to you. But that's the first thing I would have done differently is not gone to such an expensive college. Taxes. I would have started an LLC sooner. I have four LLCs today. Um, not to say that they're all super successful or anything like that. It's just when I learned that it was so easy to start your own business, I just, I kept doing it. You do have to pay taxes, so be aware of that. It's just less than if you were to get paid through a W-2. Another thing that I would have done is credit cards. I would have used them more strategically, meaning I wouldn't have just racked up so much consumer debt because I had no idea what a credit card was. I had no idea what APR meant. I just thought they were giving me free money to get me through college. And that's exactly what I did. I used it like it was free money. And then all of a sudden you get these bills and they're like, all right, you owe us this plus interest. Plus interest. Interest is, where, where does it even come from? Like, first of all, they make up money and then they charge you interest on made up money. But anyway, we'll, We'll talk about that later. Credit score. I would have bought a house when my credit score was 750. Like literally a year ago. I had no idea that at the age of 21, I could go walk into a bank with the current income that I was making. I had my own business at the time and we were doing really well. Uh, and I had a 750 credit score. I could have walked into the bank and bought a house. But no, I continue to pay rent in the middle of downtown Tampa, and, you know, like, and it just, it didn't really make sense now that I'm looking back at it, but I mean, you know, we, we move forward with our lives and do things based on our experiences. So I definitely, once I get back to the 750 credit score, which I am on that journey right now, I will be buying a home before I turn 23. 
that's pushing it because I got like three months. But anyway, going into more into that, I would have bought a home had I known uh, more about financial literacy. Buying a home is so much better than renting. You have no idea. Like you're putting equity into something that eventually one day will be yours. You could even rent it out so you can build rental income based on just like, why do we pay so much in rent? I don't, I don't even know. Anyway, this probably would have been the smartest decision that I could have made after getting a real job. Uh, not to say that starting a business, learning, growing, failing isn't a real job, but um, I did work at a credit union at one point. I think I was like 20 years old when I got the job. I could have bought a home at that point. I had no idea. But instead, you know, I, I did the whole getting an apartment, paid rent. I think I've spent almost 40 grand in rent since moving out, maybe even more, honestly. And imagine had I put all of that money into a home, I would have something now today where I can say, you know, it's mine. Real estate is generally extremely lucrative. One of the best, the best investments that you can make. So I really, that would have been like the biggest thing that I would have changed had I been more financially literate. And people don't realize that a lot of wealth is created from owning property. You go to California, for example, these homes are millions and millions of dollars and they look like any other home in the country, but just the amount of growth that California has seen and you have these old timers that have owned these properties that they can now pass down onto their kids. That is the goal. And um, had I known that sooner or had someone told me, I would have listened a little bit more. I know I spoke a lot about what I would have done differently had I been more financially literate. And I'm hoping whoever's watching this right now can kind of get an understanding of like, okay, you have time. It doesn't matter how old you are, but you have time to turn it around. So I hope you're taking what I said and turning it around because that's exactly what I'm doing. You know, I'm on track to buy my first home before I turn 23. I'm getting my credit back in order because I was not aware of any of this. Uh, I'm taking my businesses more seriously. I'm taking my jobs more seriously, my consulting, everything. I'm just doing it in a much more serious way because I realize like being financially stable and literate can lead to freedom, right? And so now I'm going to get into how you can become financially literate. Start watching YouTubers just like you're doing right now. That's how I learned. You know, I spent hours and hours on YouTube just aimlessly scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. There's literally no one talking about like, well, there are, but there's no one talking about it the way I'm talking about it to you right now. But there are people that will teach you and go in depth on ways to become financially literate. For example, there are real estate gurus, there are e-com gurus, there are car flipping gurus. There's so many different ways uh, to become financially literate by learning how to make money in other areas. And it's not all about making money. It's not that at all. It's just knowing how you can take advantage of your finances to better suit your situation. So yeah, start watching YouTubers like you're doing right now. So hit that like and subscribe button down below. Back to what I was saying, YouTubers, it's free content free education, you know, go take a course if you want to pay for something. Go take a course on financial education. Next, study some of the wealthiest people. So that's something that I really like to do. I love reading books about uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Robert Kiyosaki, all these great people in finance. And I know they're all men. I love Oprah Winfrey too. Um, I love pretty much um any woman entrepreneur i've probably read their bio i can't think of any names right now i'm so sorry i'll just put a few here just you know study these people and really understand like where they started most of these people do have rags to riches stories i would ignore the ones that came from wealth i'm just kidding don't do that but just study those people who are most influential to you and that are doing exactly what you wanna do. They are obviously financially literate because they were able to get to that position where they're, you know, they have the fame and the wealth, whatever the case is. Just study what they did, watch videos of them, if that's your forte, if you prefer reading, read books about them, whatever the case is. Just study very successful people. Lastly, you need to learn a little bit about taxes, loans, credit cards, starting a business, and you'll be 10 steps ahead of everyone else 
that is not financially literate. And so the goal here is to know how you can achieve financial freedom. I know I didn't go into much detail about financial literacy, but I just kind of wanted to get this general message out there that it is very important and it can lead to freedom. Some mistakes that I did that I want you to avoid and how you can kind of step out of that hole of damn, like, why am I not where I want to be financially?